Okay guys, let's go back to 2014 when The Force Awakens was released in December. Everybody was super hyped. It was, an, it was an amazing event to see all of these Star Wars fans lining up outside of movie theaters just to get a seat to see the first Star Wars movie since 20, 2005's The Revenge of the Sith. There was a lot of hype for the movie. The trailers looked great in it and everything. And then you get in there, you watch the movie, and I walked out and I was like, uh, this movie didn't really give me anything new. That was the feeling that I felt when I walked out of that movie. And I was thinking, I've seen this before. They really added nothing new. They pretty much just SJW'd up A New Hope. That's really the only new thing they did was put SJW politics in the movie. Now, J.J. Abrams, he's actually admitted now they got some flack for that. Now, this is what he actually had to say. He said, we've gotten a lot of flack for people saying, oh, Force Awakens was just a remake of A New Hope. And while that was something that was obviously that was never the intention, it was about introducing new characters using the old and there's a natural sense in any hero's journey of certain tenets that will come into play. Now, using the old, uh, where was Luke in that movie? If you're going to use the old characters, where was Luke? Kathleen Kennedy, where was Luke in The Force Awakens? Oh, that's right. He had a non-speaking one-minute cameo. So you just use his name to sell tickets. and. The old characters, they were never really respected. Leia had nothing to do in that movie. Han Solo was really the only one of the original trilogy characters that actually had anything to do. Even R2-D2 was a bum in that movie. He was just a dead droid just sitting there. C-3PO, he didn't really do nothing either. I mean, they only used Han Solo, and they just used him to sell tickets, and then voila, we're going to kill him off. And we get to The Last Jedi. Oh, let's kill off Luke. Now, in The Rise of Skywalker, my hit list is Lando and Chewie. They might as well just get rid of them too. But he said it was never the intention. Then what was the intention? Because you pretty much recreated the trench run of destroying the Death Star in that movie. It was pretty clear you cre- recreated a third Death Star in Starkiller Base. Now, when I first saw the Death Star as a little kid, that was pretty intimidating. Starkiller Base, mm, didn't really do much for me. I mean, they destroyed the Hosnian system with that, and I didn't even know it was a Hosnian system. I didn't have any, I didn't care about who was getting destroyed on those planets because they never introduced that that was the, the New Republic. Uh, in the movie. So they had to know, especially J.J. Abrams, I, I can only imagine how many hundreds of times they've actually watched the movie before it's released in a movie theater. They had to know that this is just, this is just a little bit too much like A New Hope, you know? They basically took Luke off a desert planet and it was Ray on a desert planet. She gets on this journey she finds out she can use the force. Um, We already covered the whole Death Star uh, 2.0 or 3.0 in this case. That thing, that was addressed in there also. Um, Yeah, you had your new Han Solo somewhat in the way with uh, Poe Dameron. But I walked out of that movie and I was just feeling... uh, I did not really like this movie. That's what I was thinking. But it was very nice to see Luke. And I just couldn't wait until I actually saw The Last Jedi. I was like, all right, let's see what Luke's been up to. And we find out he's a bum. So I know for a lot of people, uh, The Last Jedi ruined The Force Awakens. They can't actually go back and watch it. But for me, The Force Awakens was already ruined for me because it wasn't a good movie to me. It really, really wasn't. Um, Now, J.J. Abrams is going to make The Rise of Skywalker. This movie better not be 
The Return of the Jedi 2.0. Um, based on a trailer, I'm not really sure about that. It looks like we're definitely going back to Endor. Um, that was in Return of the Jedi. And it looks like we're actually going back to Tatooine also. But... I'm really hoping it's not a remake of Return of the Jedi. Um, if they consulted with George Lucas, which J.J. Abrams said that they did, and George gave his two cent, I'm thinking if George has any pull in this, it would be an original story. This movie needs to be an original story. I mean, that was the biggest flaw of The Force Awakens. It was a cheap remake of A New Hope. It was just a way just to get dollars. They were playing it way too safe. And they threw out George Lucas's story treatments for seven, eight, nine. They thought that they knew star Wars better than him. And they were absolutely wrong. And then you get to the last Jedi, which is absolute garbage. So this movie, it has to be original, but yet it can't be a remake. And I think JJ Abrams knows that. Uh, does Kathleen Kennedy know that? I'm not sure. She's, She's pretty clueless on Star Wars, but this movie has to be original. I mean, I'm going to be extremely disappointed um, if it's a remake or touches really on Return Jedi very, very much. So I think that's why a lot of people actually don't want Kylo Ren to be redeemed in this movie because they already saw Vader redeemed. So if Kylo Ren does it, in a similar way, of course, that's just not going to work for the fans. I mean, the fans, you know, they got fooled once with The Force Awakens. And overall, people liked it. But now I'm thinking thinking that people actually do think, all right, maybe this movie isn't as good as I thought it was. And the movie hasn't aged very well. That's the opinion I'm getting from fans of The Force Awakens. Now, J.J. Abrams, I'm not going to completely blame him for The Force Awakens. His hands were tied. I mean, if if they're going to throw out George Lucas's story treatments, you know, everyone else is fair game for their ideas. I don't know what kind of ideas J.J. Abrams was really able to bring to the table. It seems like his hands were tied down by Kathleen Kennedy, the story group, even Disney, you know. But we saw how all all the freedom that Ryan Johnson had in The Last Jedi, and he had complete freedom with that movie. And they let him roll with it, and it cost him quite a bit. So they can't make the same, same mistakes going back this time. But however, you do have Emperor Palpatine in The Rise of Skywalker, and the real first time we saw the Emperor was in Return of the Jedi. So Palpatine is dead, so maybe he's actually still dead in this movie, but we will have to see about that. Um, But The Force Awakens, like I said, it really did nothing for me whatsoever. I mean, Kathleen Kennedy, she lied to us. She said that they're going to honor the characters that George Lucas created. Yeah, they're going to honor them by killing them off one by one in every single movie and the Han Solo getting killed off. I think that really rubbed people kind of the wrong way. They didn't like the deadbeat dad angle. So I guess that was some original creativity. He was a deadbeat dad in this one. He wasn't a deadbeat dad in the force awakens, but guys, I don't like the movie. I just do not like that movie whatsoever. It's better than the last Jedi. But anything is better than The Last Jedi. It doesn't take much. It only takes a little bit of effort to be better than The Last Jedi. But guys, what do you think of this? Did you think that The Force Awakens was a ripoff of A New Hope? Um, It seems like J.J. Abrams is kind of admitting that. You know, he said that was never the intent, even though he didn't straight out say, no, it's not a remake. But I think J.J. Abrams, he even knows that The Force Awakens is really basically a remake of A New Hope. So, guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comments. If you're new here to the channel, please hit subscribe to catch future videos from me. And we will catch you on the next video. 
John Matrix out.